Hello Math 30-2, welcome back. Today you're starting the new unit, Exponential and Logarithm Functions. Uh, so first off we're going to do with a review and a preview. So we're going to start off by reviewing exponents and then eventually we're going to go on what is the inverse of exponents and that's going to lead up to logs. So here's just a little quick review exponents. So product law. If we have two, product, two numbers with the same base and we have a different exponent. What can we do to the exponents? For this one here, all we could, all we have to do is, this is the same as x n plus m. We add the exponents together. That's our product law. Now let's take a look at the next one, the power of a power. All right? So for this one right here, if we have this, we have a power to a power, that is x m multiplied by n. So multiplication, we multiply. And then we have power of the quotient, so this power must go into both, kind of like distributive property. So we have x to the m all over y to the m. Next one here is the integral rule. This is just you flip it over. Okay, so that one is 1 over x to the m, just a quick review. And the next one is the rational exponents, which is the same thing as the root. We have the m there, x to the m, or x to the like that that ends on the outside I'll just try and make it a little bit more clear so we have the n there so the root x so like that all right now the quotient law right here and that's going to be what we do is we just subtract it it's m minus n. and then we have power of a product which is x to the m y to the n it's kind of like the distributive property outside the brackets, we kind of use the distributive property. Very similar to what we did earlier in when we multiply. So, here we are. Our first example is, use the exponent law to simplify the following. So we look at this. This one here is our product law from up here. So what are we going to do? We add the exponents together. x, 2 plus 3 is 5, so that's x to the 5. This next one here is the same as our quotient law. So that's going to be x, 6 minus 4, which is equal to x to the, oh, 6 minus 2, which is x to the 4. This next one here is power to a power. So that's x to the 5 multiplied by 4, which is same as x to the 20. And this last one, or second last one, is the power of a quotient. So this one here is power of a quotient. So that is just x to the 3 all over y to the 3, kind of like distributive law. And the last one here is, well, power of a product. So this is where a lot of people make a mistake. They only put this 3 into the x. But since this, this 3 is outside the bracket of all of this, both of these have to be cubed. So that's really 3 to the 3, x to the 3, which is the same as 27, x to the 3. All right? Now, write each expression without brackets and with positive exponents. So without brackets, we have positive exponents. Now we have negative exponents. So that is an integral exponent right here. If we negative, it's just 1 over x to the minus. So we have to put it 1 over. So in this case, it's 1 over x to the 3. That's how we make it positive. All right? Just put 1 over x to the 3. No sign switch here except for the exponent. So now let's look at the next one. Right here, we have... Ah, if we look at this, the only thing to the negative is this x. So if I was to look at this, we have 2 times 4, which is 8, x to the 3, and this is all underneath, which is x to the 4. Now, if we look at that, we could use our trusty old quotient rule, which is division. This divided by that. Well, in that case, we subtract, or we, all, we cancel off. So that is going to give me 8 all over x. So this is the same thing as, I'll just write it over here. These cancel, cancel, cancel. We're left with just x on the bottom. Okay? So it's 8 over x. Or we could have subtract, or we could have added, because this is the multiple product rule. Uh, 3 plus negative 4 is negative 1, and then use the quotient rule. Okay? So this one right here is product rule. All right, so we have 3 times 4 is 12, so that's x to the 12, and 2 to the 3. Well, we continue that. That's 8x to the 12. All right, 
Now, let's take a look at the next one. So, let's take a look at this one here. We have 5 multiplied in. But, while well, we have full of bed nets, what is first? Brackets. Everything in the brackets? Simplify. Great. Next is exponents. There's that 3. Let's simplify that exponent in. Put this in there. So, this goes to that, which is x to the 6. Then we have the 3 goes to that 3. So, that's 3 to the 3. All multiplied by 5. What do we end up getting? 27x to the 6 multiplied by 5. Okay? So, we multiply this by 5. I am going to get 135 to the 6. Alright? There we go. I'm just going to move this over a bit. Okay, so now let's take a look at our next one. We're going to have 5x to the negative 3 multiplied by uh, negative x to the negative 2. Well, we have two negatives here. So if this is positive, we have to reciprocal that. So that's kind of like saying 5x to the negative 3 all over 1. Well, the integral rule says we take the reciprocal of that. So we are going to reciprocal that. So that's like saying really 5 over x to the 3. Now this is on the bottom. So that there is like saying 1 over x to the negative 2. So we have to take the, using the integral exponent rule again, we're going to reciprocal that, that's the same thing as x squared. Over, okay, so x1, x squared. So basically if we combine these two together, we are left with 5x squared all over x to the 3, which gives me this quotient rule. We have to subtract 5 and then over x. That's it. Okay? Because to subtract 3, we'll just have that 1 on the bottom. There we go. Last one here. Oh, we have a half. 12b to the half. So first I'm going to divide these, which gives me 4. Now, 1 half, so this should go on the bottom. All right, so it looks like that, because it's an integral rule. Now, this is the same thing as to the 1. Right? If there's nothing there, it's to the 1. But we have to add these together now. 1 half and that, because it says the product rule, or product rule. So we have to add those together. Well, what's 1 half plus 1? We need common denominators. Anytime we add fractions, we need common denominators. This is the same as 4, b to the 1 over 2, and b to the 2 over 2. That's the same thing as 1, 2 over 2. So that gives me 4 all over b to the 3 over 2. Okay? Which, uh, we want positive exponents. I can leave it that way, or I could put this part here. So that's the same thing as 4, and I could say square root of b to the 3. We can go like that. That's another way of doing it. This is good enough for now. All right? So here we go. Question number 3 says, without using a calculator, determine the value of the fall. All right, so 2 to the negative 3. Well, that is the same thing as 1 over 2 to the 3. Okay? Hmm. Where is that? 2 to the 3 is 1 over 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2, which is the same thing as 1 over 8. 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8. Now, the next one says 9 to the 3 over 2. Okay, so we're going to look at this one, 9, 3 over 2, okay. So this is saying the same thing as square root of 9, and then we have to cube it. So first, or, if look at this one, square root of 9, and all of this is cubed. So what's the square root of 9? 3. So that gives me 3 cubed. What is cubed? 3 cubed, that's 3 times 3 times 3, 3 times 3 is 9, multiplied by 3, 9 multiplied by 3 is 27. Ah, look how simple that is. I'll just write that out. Because this is 9 times 3 is 27. 25 to the 0. Well, anything to the power of 0 is equal to what? 1. Okay, little proof is 2 to the 3 is equal to 8. 2 to the 4, or 2 squared is equal to 4. 2 to the 1 is equal to 2. 
But what are we doing every time? We are dividing by 2 every time we go down. Divide by 2. Well, then what do we have to divide by again? 2. So then 2 to the 0 is 1. So we're just going down. So anything to the 0 is 1. Okay. Next one here says 16. Ah, to the negative. Oops. 16 to the negative 1 half. So we go 16 to the negative 1 half. So pause that's 1 over 16 to the 1 over 2. So in other words, if we take a look at this, that's going to be 1 over square root of 16. And what is the square root of 16? 1 over 4. That's it. Simple. Okay, so now here is an investigation for you guys to do. Oops, I'll get that all out. So here's our investigation for you guys to do. And it is about doing an inverse. So you're investigating inverses. I strongly recommend you to do this. I will check if you are able to do this or not uh, tomorrow in class. So I recommend you guys spend some time on doing this by yourself without me telling you how to do it, okay? And here is part two of the investigation of inverses for you to do as well. I want you guys to do this. I'll check tomorrow to see if this is done. This is, um, if you need help, I can help you in class. All right, so now it says, for example, four, I'm assuming everyone's done all of that inverse part. It says determine the inverse of the function defined by this following equation. Okay, I'm gonna zoom in here. And there we go. So we have this, we wanna find the inverse. So first step we're going to do is switch x and y. Okay, so I'm going to have x is equal to five y minus six. All right, there shouldn't be a dash there. So I switched x and y, that is step one, so you might want to write that down. Step two is we are going to solve for y. So we solve for y. First thing I'm going to do is add six to both sides. So I get x plus six is equal to five y. Next thing I'm going to do is, we want to solve for y is, we divide by five, divide by five. So I'm going to end up getting y is equal to x plus 6 all divided by 5. Okay? Now, the reason why we do this is it's kind of like working in reverse. What is the first thing we do here? We want to solve for y, so we just work in reverse. First thing we do is, if we were to solve this, I would go 5 multiplied by y, and then I'd subtract 6. But now, it's kind of like we put on the tire to solve, but now we're going to take off the tire because we're working backwards, okay, so putting on, taking on tire. So we're doing the exact opposite and the opposite things. So with the x, so if we're looking at x, which is the opposite, it's the reverse guy, we have to plus 6 first, because we're going in reverse, and the opposite, and then we divide by 5 instead of multiplying. Okay? So that's the way of thinking about that. All right, so good luck on your assignment tomorrow, and I hope you did your two, your two investigations, and I'll check about that, make sure you have them done. And see you tomorrow in class.